Why did call it call him impossible Galea? for a human being to be 90 feet tall? 90 feet tall is the size of the trees behind you. Go and look at them. Are you telling me that Adam was that big? <laughs> and the reason why he gave zero evidence for the existence of an Indio is because there is none. He doesn't know that. Why? Because all he's doing is repeating arguments he's heard from Zaki and Nike. This isn't just a little blunder by Allah. This is a whopping big blunder by Allah. It's not my opinion, mate. It's a if fact. Someone, if someone and that's the problem with the Muslims <laughs> in the world. <laughs> you don't <laughs> like facts. They create rich laws better than you. No, I'm afraid that if, the creator, if your creator is right, then he's a deceiver. Because all the archaeological evidence tells us that people have been getting taller in time, but the hadith say that we started at 90 feet tall. That's as big as the tree then. He did. He did. He did. That's as big as the tree. There was no. Well, your prophet was an ignorant simpleton of the medieval period. There was no tall people. And if the evidence contradicts your belief, there was no tall people. There was no tall people. So the hadiths are wrong. Boing. What, what was my question? Well, you didn't make a question. Do you, you believe? Made a statement. You believe? You said? Do you believe there were no tall people? You said you're defending the idea that Muhammad was 90 feet tall. No, no, Adam. Muhammad? Don't 90 no, no, feet Adam, tall. Adam, 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 sorry, okay. Adam. My apologies. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank okay. you for the you correction. See, the I made mistakes. You I made mistakes. Who? Like giving wrong references. Who killed? So, no, no, no. Stick to the Adam being 90 yeah, feet tall. Okay, okay, tall, tall. Right, he was 90 tall. feet tall. Which logically means if he was the first human, you don't believe nine humans were tall. 90 feet tall. You don't believe humans were tall. I don't believe we were 90 feet tall. Who killed David? Who killed David? No one killed David. He died who killed David? David, David you killed mean Goliath. You mean David Goliath. killed who? Goliath. And yes. How big was he? He was about six, seven foot. In a world, How do you know? maybe taller. How do you know? Because he was called a giant of his time. So, so, I've seen. seen. So that giant I, was about six or seven, seven feet, feet tall. Feet tall. Yeah. No, no, no. In a world when people were tall. Have you ever seen an eight-foot man? Come on. They're still giant now. Who killed Goliath? And we've already looked at that. And how tall was he? We reckon about between six and eight feet tall, which is completely where, impossible. Where, where it says? Doesn't give his height. But he calls Where him a giant. Where did come up with the height? You no. use, how can we say? You use how the can knowledge. I, okay, how can what is a, a giant be tall? Don't know Let's the deal with Adam. Of giant. Let's deal with Adam. The maximum height of do a giant. Do you believe? Do you Give believe me Adam was 90 feet tall? Give me from the Bible. That's what that, you believe. The height of a okay, giant. So, so a man who was 90 feet tall is our progenitor. What is the limit of and the human beings your, according your, uh, in your opinion? It's uh, got to be biologically possible. Okay, uh, it's how what's you biologically most possible. Extreme. Why they call him Goliath? It's impossible for a human being to be 90 feet tall. 90 feet tall is the size of the trees behind you. Go and look at them. Are you telling me that Adam was that big? <laughs> That's what your medieval prophet said. That's what your simpleton Muhammad said. He said that Adam was as big as that tree behind you. Look at it. Right. So now, who killed Goliath? So now, so now, so now, let's take that argument logically. You say you believe it. You say you believe it. Right. So now let's compare that claim to the evidence. What does the argument? What does the you archaeological you evidence? Yeah, you said you believe in Tarzan. No, I never said Tarzan. Yes, you said. <laughs> what is the archaeological evidence? The archaeological evidence is that human beings have been getting taller, not shorter. The further you go back in time, the shorter people become because of poor diet. That's why. Okay? Short, yeah. and all the evidence is that we've been getting taller. So who killed Goliath? According to Muhammad, Hugh, the first humans were 90 feet tall, and therefore we have been getting shorter. 
which contradicts all the evidence. Who killed Goliath? Your, the evidence contradicts your hadiths. If the evidence contradicts your belief system, leave it. Embrace something that goes with the evidence. <laughs> Do you believe Adam was 90 feet tall? I'm asking. Beautiful response. Beautiful Help, response. silence. Beautiful it's a beautiful response. response because he knows what he's letting himself in for. So we've got Muslims here. Who killed Goliath? David killed Goliath. And who was Goliath? Goliath was a warrior in the... Ah, he's Palestinian. joking! I'm not going to say Palestinian. Philistine army. Philistine army. And what the Bible calls him? A giant. How tall was he? A no, giant, maximum. Would you nine, nine feet, feet maximum, maximum. which is biologically possible. It is biologically possible. How do you? I've met a guy who was seven foot five, and I tell you, he was a giant to me. He was seven foot five. There are people on record who are eight feet tall. It is biologically possible to be nine feet tall. So imagine for a second, have we got anyone here who's five foot five? No, 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 no. no. Anyone? Don't be shy, there's nothing wrong. Right, you're five foot five. Right, so this is not your sister, five foot two. Imagine someone who's seven foot next to her, or eight foot next to her, or nine foot next to her. She be able to see it. She w that person would look like a giant. Back in the time of David, the average height was five foot five or less. Oh, you were there, you were there. So de archaeological evidence. No, in the Bible. Archaeological evidence. Religiously, in the Bible. In the Bible. And this is why our religion is better than Islam. Because the Christian faith is allowed, we allow it to inform us the best knowledge of the best learning of the time. We have no problem using archaeological evidence or scientific inquiry. By contrast, Muslims are committed to defending. They mock, but they don't debate. Do you notice? They mock, but they don't debate. They heckle, but they don't debate. They shout, but they don't debate. So, Adam, 90 feet tall, do you believe that? Where is the evidence that the first humans were 90 feet tall? You didn't have any evidence. What evidence do we have? What evidence do we have? No, we do have evidence. Yes, we do. Go to Pompeii in Italy and you will see encased in ash the fossilized bodies of Romans who died when Mount Vesuvius erupted. Those people were short, yeah, they were short. Five <laughs> foot and less. Five foot five. The archaeological <laughs> evidence shows <laughs> that human <laughs> beings <laughs> were short. <laughs> Muhammad, believing in myths and fairy tales, <laughs> believed that the first human was 90 feet tall. Do you let other people talk to you? Well, respond then to my argument. Okay. <coughs> this gentleman's name is Bob the Builder. He comes, he comes, he comes to Speaker's Corner to spread the word of Christianity. He calls himself uh, a Christian scholar, which I would say. Just a quick note to the camera. Notice how the Muslims are working the crowd during the debate. That's something that Christians need to be doing. Continue. Continue. Right, then paint yourself. Have you finished? Well, yeah, Are you well, talking yeah, about yeah. me, not to me? Oh. <laughs> Can I talk now? No one's stopping you. It's okay. So ah, if it. you talk, then I won't talk. So this guy comes here as a Christian scholar, talks about Christianity, wants to spread the word of Christianity, don't you? Yes. Yeah? So he comes here to preach Christianity. And he comes as a scholar of Christianity. And he is well worth well versed in his book and he comes here he doesn't talk about christianity when he comes here but the moment he gets a muslim he talks about islam he talks about what is your religion if you are a 
Christian and you're a preacher, you should tell him what is your message. Yes. Well, let me reply to that. Let me finish. Let me reply to that. I haven't finished. I haven't finished. Let me reply to I that point finished. and then you can continue. You spoke for half an hour. No, you, I haven't you were finished. ignoring me the whole time. I haven't finished. Let me reply to I haven't finished. Let me reply to I haven't finished. Let me reply to I haven't finished. Go on, I have another point. I have another point. I haven't finished. Are you just going to repeat the same one? I asked you. Have you finished? Continue. You said yes. Continue. So unless I don't finish, shut up and keep quiet. No, no, friend. No. No, it doesn't work like that. You come round. you finish. No, you come round heckling people at night, hidden behind a scarf, and then in the daytime, you take down your scarf and you behave completely differently. Don't be a hypocrite. Don't be one thing at night and another thing during the day. And also, let's be clear, if you go round to any of the Muslims around here in the park, they will be criticising Christianity. They do so often. How? How? But they complain how? 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 if you criticise Islam. Wait, wait, wait. wait. I'll explain okay. how. Okay, wait. Yes. The brother, the brother. They attack the Trinity. They attack the Bible. Yes. They, there you go. Yes. He admits it. He admits it. Thank you very much. So Muslims... Come and attack the Christian faith, but we cannot attack their faith. What do you mean by attack? They live by a double standard. What do you mean by attack? I've just explained. How? They attack Christian beliefs. They attack Christian. How? Okay, so they criticize Christian doctrine. They, and that's what I'm doing. No, no, no. I'm taking your sources criticizing. and I am making a Why criticism you of them. You said criticizing Christian doctrine. Yes. How? What is their question? Uh, so, one example. One example. Because he wasn't listening. He wasn't listening. He demands that people listen, but he doesn't listen himself. The Dawa team come around and they look for people who don't know their faith. And then they attack the Bible and they say it's not trustworthy. They attack the Trinity and say that it's incoherent. They attack the belief that me, Christ was God and say that it has no basis in reality. But when Christians challenge them, when Christians challenge their beliefs on their sources, tend to be the victim. Let us finish. Be clear. This guy who is standing before you and trying to play the possum at night time puts on a scarf and behaves aggressively to Christian women and to Christian men. That's the man that is standing in front of you. Your turn. Okay. If I'm a liar, if I, if I create, if I create trouble, as a Muslim, I have a brother who is a Muslim. He's got money. And you as a Christian, he is a Muslim. Why don't you, if you believe in your faith, debate him now? So, I challenge you with Allah, Allah I mean, you have a debate. I have prepared to everybody. There you go. If these has the audacity to debate with me, come on, let's go. Come on, what did it say? Come on, let me finish. So, Lamin, Lamin, don't ask questions. Lamin, no, don't ask questions. Do you see, he wants to debate, but he says, don't ask questions. Don't ask questions. He said debate. He Let's arranged the debate with me. He arranged the debate. Let's be clear. Arranged the debate. Let's be clear. He ran away. Notice. He arranged the debate. Come on. Let's be clear. Let's arrange the debate. Would you be in Who remembers? That Lamin offered me five hundred pounds to debate. Yes. Who remembers? No. I'm here. He's going to have his debate. I'm here. I'm here. He's going to have his debate. He's going to have his debate. No. Listen. 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 He's going to have his debate. No.
five minutes five to minutes. make his case. <laughs> five, 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 five. I will then listen have to five minutes listen to, me. to reply. Yeah. And then Lammy will have listen. five we minutes. Will and so it will continue five minutes, five minutes, five minutes. Wait, 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 wait. Let him talk now, let him talk. Let me, let me talk. Look, look. This video here, there will be a link on the video. I came here, debated with him. Five minutes, you admitted to me that the Bible is corrupted. Did you? It's on YouTube. Did you admit to me that we need a time? No, hold on, hold on, hold on. We need time. Wait, 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 Okay, let me know when you're ready. No, Five wait, minutes. Wait, wait. When he starts talking. You talk. cannot decide. You cannot decide. Let me decide. Decide. Let me decide. 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 Let me you talk. Decide let, the rules. Me, let me talk. Let me talk. Yeah. This man here. Yeah. Let me start. finish no, talking. No, Shut up. No, 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 wait. Wait. Let me talk. Yeah. Wait. Yeah. 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 Wait. 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 We Christians are not being bullied by the Salafists. We're not going to be bullied by the Salafists. This is how they behave all the time at Speaker's Corner. They use physical intimidation. That is what they do. And I didn't see you do a thing. Five minutes, five minutes. Let me talk. Wait, 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 let me talk. Wait, wait. I'm not ready to start again. Wait, don't start anything. Look, look, look. We all have a two debates. Listen to me. Two debates. The first debate, the first debate, he arranged concept of God in Islam versus the concept of God in Christianity. After first one, when we finish that, we go to the Bible and the Quran. Yeah, you ready with that? Let's start with the first one. You owe me the debate. No, I don't. You owe me five hundred pounds. Remember that. You owe me five hundred pounds because he knows we're debating the reliability of the Bible. We're debating the Bible. He's doing a debate on the Bible. We're doing a debate on the Bible. What about the Quranic sun attacks? Let them debate. We'll come to that, brother. We'll come to that. We'll come to that, brother. He's going to cover it up. Just make it bigger, man. Okay. We're going to go against the fence, guys. Yeah. The cross of St. George. When we come here, listen to me. When you come to Speaker's Corner, when I come here, my topic, what I talk about first, is the way. The oneness of God. The oneness of God. You have me, brother, sister? The oneness of God. Because we believe that God is all around God, they believe in time God. Two weeks ago, he was debating. Challenge the Muslim that he believes the Trinity. He's going to prove that Jesus is God. And he owe me the debate. When he finishes that, we come to the Bible. No. I'm here. No. That's the, Lamin that's owes me 500 pounds. You liar. Why? He doesn't. <laughs> Wait. It's on camera, Lamin. Listen, multiple listen to, times. Listen to me. Two weeks ago. You do not. 500 know. pounds are to cut you run away. You want to debate. YouTube. Let's debate the Bible. Pounds, he count it. Why is he running? Run away. He's pestered yes, me for a debate for free, no, no, despite no, 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 the no, fact no, no, that he said he was going to pay me five hundred pounds to debate him. Listen to me, you liar. Now he's got his I chance. Took, I took he's equivocating. Three hundred pounds. He's equivocating. Five hundred pounds. Let us debate. Let us debate the Bible. Look, let us debate the Bible. Now let's put that. We're going to debate the Bible and the concept of God in Islam and the concept of two. We're going to debate the Bible. We're going to debate the Bible. That's what we debate. You want to know? You said Jesus is God. That's what we're going. We joined the two to It's always the same with Lamin. He just gasses and talks, and it ends up being a waste of time. And this is why I avoid debating him.
<laughs> he said he was going to pay me 500 pounds. Liar. He never he did. did. He well, accuses lie. me of lying. He that is that a lie himself. Why do you have to pay? This is the man that sends Why do you have to pay to pay to you? A man that is not a debate. man of his word debate. and a man that Let's lies. Let us debate the Bible. Let us debate that. Who wants to start? Lamin's going to start. He's going to have five minutes. Go, Lamin. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ربي صفي صفي ويسن لأمري ولو كنت فمي زاني يفقه قولي الحمد لله رب العالمين ما رأسبكت ما أبرافس وسيسترس ما أدرس أبرافس وسيستر إسلام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته عليكم السلام and ما أبرافس ما أدرس أبرافس وسيسترس in Christi in in humanity greetings to you all that this man here Bob he's been coming here for about four or five years now. Attack, attack, attack Islam. <laughs> and that's what he's good at. I've been following for two years the videos on YouTube. About four videos. First one, he ran away with like a chicken hearted win. It's on YouTube. Second one, I called on him. We debated. He claimed he concurred with the Muslims. He agreed with Muslims that the Bible is corrupted. I took the Holy Bible out. It's on Soko. I took the Bible. I said, Do you believe in all these things? Yes. And when I saw him the difference, he said, Yes, I believe that the Bible is corrupted. You believe he said the Bible is corrupted. Why you want to debate with the Bible? Now he's coming here. Two weeks ago, he was challenging the Muslims that the Muslims got the Trinity wrong. Trinity, we got it wrong. That he was going to prove to us that Jesus got incarnate. This is more important to us. We, the Muslims, we believe in Jesus Christ because of him. As a man, a prophet, a messiah, sent to the Jews. He never said he's God. He never said worship me. For us, the Muslim, Tawheed is number one. So we're going to join the two together. Tawheed and the Bible. Now, we the Muslims, we believe in all the prophets. All the prophets. The Hadith said 124,000 prophets have been sent on the face of the heart. <laughs> all the other prophets before the last and final messenger were sent to their people at a particular time period. But Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi is the last and final messenger sent to the whole mankind. The Quran is the last and final revelation of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala sent to the whole mankind. It is God's Quran. It is mentioned. It is mentioned in Surah Ibrahim, chapter 14, verse 52. That this Quran is a clear message for the whole of mankind. Let them take warning there from. Let them know that there is only Allah. And let the men of understanding take heed. My brothers and sisters, you read God's Quran. The concept of God in Islam, if you want to know about it, the Quran has got 114 surahs. Now, if you want to know, the concept of God in Islam, you have to go to the 112 surah, which is called Surah Ikhlas. This surah is called Hu Allah Ahad. Say he's Allah the one, Allah who summer, Allah upon who all depend. La Melin wala me that. He begets not, no, he's begotten. And that is not the like him. Now, the Bible here, we are telling the Christians that this Bible cannot be the 100% word of God because of adding sort of delicious and contradictions. In the Bible, for the book to claim to be the word of God, it has to go through, it has to pass or go through three criteria. First, it must make a claim that is the word of God. Second, it must not contain any additions, any deletions, which means you mustn't add any word or verses to it or take away anything from it. And the third, it must not contain any contradiction. The Bible is replete with contradictions, chopping and changing. So I'm asking Bob, which, before you move on, tell me which Bible you believe in. And I'm going to show you, they're not the same. The Quran, 114 surahs. You know, they came, they come here, they said, the Quran is about what? 22 Qurans or 25 Qurans, they lie. Only one, 114 surahs, 6,233, 223 verses. No addition, no deletion. But your Bible is here. I don't know which one you believe in, you can tell me here. King James Version, one Revised minute. Standard Version, one NIV. So you want to know which verse you will be quoting from? Yes. Yeah. Don't go one hour to two hours today, inshallah. Two hours debate. And I'm going to show this man that they are following Paul. Paul is the founder of Christianity, not Jesus Christ. Three hours today, don't run away. The cameras are on today. Come on, go. On. So you put everything on the plane. Got 40 seconds. You go to the, even your topic, slavery. Don't go, go. No, let, let, let me go. Oh, okay. We are here. Let's go. We know which, 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 which Bible now you're talking about. You want to know? Pick one. 
Okay. Are you done, yeah, Lavi? No so Come on, go. Okay. As you noted, ladies and gentlemen, I allowed Lamin to speak within, without interruption, and no Christian here interrupted Lamin. So I would ask Lamin to contain himself and not interrupt me into debate today like he does everyone else he debates. I'd also ask the Muslims who are in the crowd today to allow Lamin to be your spokesman and to allow me to make a fair presentation in the same way that I allowed Lamin, and so did my brothers and sisters. Praise the Lord, all nations, and Lord him, all peoples, for his loving kindness is great towards us, and the truth of the Lord is everlasting. Praise the Lord. To my brothers and sisters, I say peace and blessings through the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And to you that are around, I say hello. The debate today is about the Bible. And for that debate to be legitimate, it has to be based upon how Christians understand the Bible within our own faith. Because Lamin, over the course of this next hour, is going to make an argument based upon textual variants that I freely admit are present. And he is going to make the argument that those textual variants invalidate the text. That is the, the argument that Lamin is going to make. However, as Christians, we have an understanding of our faith that means that those textual variants do not have any compromising effect upon our beliefs or doctrines. And I will evidence that from the Bible itself. I'll begin, and if you have a Bible and you want to follow me, I invite you to open up to Luke chapter 1, starting at verse 1, reading, Inasmuch as many have undertaken to complete an account of the things accomplished amongst us, just as they were handed down to us by those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and servants of the word, it seemed fitting for me as well, having investigated everything carefully from the beginning, to write it out for you in consecutive order, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the exact truth about the things you have been taught. Now what do we learn from that passage? Number one, we learn that there were Christians before the Gospel of Luke. Theophilus believed before the gospel was written. Two, we realize that other people had been writing down accounts before Luke wrote his gospel. And finally, we know that those oral traditions were understood by the community to have come from eyewitnesses. Meaning that the Christian faith does not depend upon the book. The book depends upon the faith because the faith came first. Now, further evidence to that fact you will find in a letter written by one of our apostles called Paul. He writes a letter to another leader of the church called Timothy, in which he writes the following. It is a trustworthy statement if any man aspires to the office of overseer. It is a fine work he desires to do. An overseer then must be above reproach. And he goes on to explain the characters of an overseer. These overseers that you have evidenced in the epistles demonstrate that the faith was taught orally first and that the gospels and the literature of the bible emerged from this nascent community was written by this nascent community to this nascent community and about this nascent community which means that our faith is not dependent upon the book, 
The book is dependent upon the faith, and that is where Lamin has to begin. Alhamdulillah, I'm so glad that you took the, your break to the debate with me. This man is empty. You see, the faith, the doesn't uh, they, 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 they don't uh, depend on the, the book. I mean, it's incredible. We are telling you Jesus Christ was of him was a messiah, a man, a prophet, a servant of God. Said to the children of Israel, you are right there. Christianity has nothing to do with Jesus Christ was of him. Jesus wasn't a Christian. He was the messiah sent to the Jews. Matthew, Mark and Luke and John were not there. He did not carry a book with him. We believe in Jesus, the Wahid and Revelation that was given to him. The Injil, this is not the Injil. Jesus never claimed divinity. Even your Bible here, that's why we have, you know, yeah. Look at this Bible here. You see this Bible here? In here, John 3, 16. It's here. But in these two books, they took it out. They, they, they begotten, not made. They chalk it out as a fabrication, as a concoction. These are not Muslims. Christian scholars of high eminence, they said, begotten not made, is a lie. They are not Muslims. So I don't know what you're about. Jesus never said anywhere in your Bible that he was the begotten son of God. So I don't know where you get that from. We are telling you that you're following Paul. The New Testament has 27 books. Paul wrote half of them. From the book of Romans to Philemon, Paul is the author. If you read the Bible here, I'm telling you, Jesus, he was a man. Jesus said, my father has given an eye, Gospel of John 14, 28. John 5, 30, I can of myself do nothing. I say, here I judge and my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. The Bible here, as I said, they are not the same. So I want to know which one do you believe in? You read the Bible, you go to the Old Testament. Jesus was a Jew. A Torah observant Jew who observed the law, never deviated from the law. Paul came and changed everything. You are following Paul. Do you know what Paul said about the law? The law inside the law should be observed. Jesus said, himself said, in the Gospel of uh, Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17 to 19, Think not I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Who then breaks the list of these commandments? Will not be called, will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But who, who does them will be called the great in the kingdom of heaven. What did Paul say? Paul said in Galatians chapter 2, verse 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even though we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. That's Paul. Follow in the Bible, in Galatians, chapter number 2, verse 21. Paul, uh, Paul for us said that. I do not frustrate the grace of God. I do not frustrate the grace of the Lord. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ died in vain. This is Paul. If you believe in Jesus Christ, you should observe the law. Jesus in the Bible said he was a man. Gospel of John, chapter 8, verse number 40. Jesus said to the enemies, but now you seek to kill me. A man who has told you the new truth which I heard from God. Gospel of John 17, 3, what did, what did Jesus said? In the upper room with the disciples, said to them, and this is eternal life, that they might know you are the only true God and Jesus Christ whom we have sent. One minute. Yeah. So we are telling you that this Bible, the Quran is the last and final set testament sent for the whole of mankind. This Bible here is not the Injil. I've got different Bibles here. The early Christians, the early followers of Jesus Christ, you know him? What did they do? They followed the teaching of Jesus Christ. So in the Quran, those people were Muslim. They all go to heaven. They never called Jesus because his son, never called him God incarnate, John 1 or John 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was a God, and the Word was God. 14, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace. Why did you get that from? If you, if you go to the Old Testament, God, Almighty God, said a lot of things about His oneness and His uniqueness. They will never quote those verses. If you read the uh, Bible, in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 43, verse number 10 to 11, God said, 
before me, no God was found. No shall there be any after me. I am the Lord. Time, and beside me, there is no Savior. Time. Oh, I'm just going to move. Let me. I'm going to move over to your side. Sorry, just a bit easier. Go ahead. Okay. Ready? Yep. Ready. We trust you. So, <laughs> Lamin has talked a lot, but he hasn't dealt with the basic premise of my argument, which is that the Christian faith existed before the New Testament. And that is a fact. It is a fact that Paul was writing to communities that he had not yet visited, that he was not responsible for founding. He didn't found the community in Rome, but he wrote an epistle to them. Now, if the Christian faith is based upon Paul's writing. Why was Paul writing to a church that he had not visited? Why did that community recognize his writing as bearing authority? Paul was not the founder of the church in Rome. Peter was. Now, he talks about an Injil. The Quran talks about an Injil, which means that the Quran has made a statement about history. It has said that there is a document called the Injil that was given to Isa 2,000 years ago. And yet, what is the verdict of history on the existence of this document? The verdict of history is silence. No one ever quotes it. No one ever mentions it. No one ever protests its existence. No one ever argues against it. By contrast, Clement, writing in 90 AD, makes clear references to the New Testament I have in my hand. Ignatius quotes the New Testament I have in my hand. Irenaeus quotes the New Testament I have in my hand. Oregon quotes, badly, the New Testament. No, that was Esuvius. Oregon quotes the New Testament I have in my hand. Tertullian quotes the New Testament I have in my hand. Esuvius quotes the New Testament I have in my hand. Augustine quotes the New Testament I have in my hand. Again and again and again, the testament of history is that these books were original. Scholars like Bart Ehrman, like notice that the Muslims are heckling. Yeah. It's got a fake in it. Two Peter is a fake. Two Peter is a no fake. Christian heckled the Muslim, but now the Muslims are heckling the Christian. This is biggest corner. It's biggest corner. Will you agree to give me 30 seconds more because he heckled? Okay. I'm, Paul is going to give me 30 seconds more. Paul, Paul, be quiet. Debate this issue. I challenge you to a debate now on the New Testament. What is is a lie. Interrupting the debate. Paul, 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 Quiet. I will debate. Be quiet, Paul. Tell him. Tell him, Lamin. Tell him, Lamin. He's not even a Muslim. Right. Why are you starting you start my time? You were talking through it, bro. All right. right. So we're going to have another minute, yeah? Yeah, sure. Right. So, guys, because Paul interrupted, I'm going to have another minute. So, the testament of history is that the New Testament is a sourced document. A recognized document. I challenge Lamin. Produce me a scrap of evidence that where there was ever a New Testament called an Injil, a document called an Injil given to Jesus. Show me a scrap of evidence that there were Muslims in the first century that we can recognize as Muslims. He can't. All he can do, all he can do, 
I'll have another 30 seconds. I can do it. I can get the evidence. Paul interrupted. Paul, shut up. Everybody wants you to shut up. I can produce the Emian Ramin or Paul Heckle. You want to come and debate now? Be quiet, Paul. No, don't run, Lammy. Lammy wants to run away. Lammy wants to run away. He's running. Come on, come on. He wants to get out. Come on, come on. Paul, please. I've got two of these guys. I don't want him to run away. Come and go. On. We so, go. Wait, no, 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 I'm talking about We're waiting for them to. We're waiting for the Muslims keep to decide who they want to debate me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me debate you. Let me debate you. Go on, go on. So, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to take that. No, I'm not going to take that. 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 And I challenge every Muslim. Yes. Where is your evidence have, of an injil? I have it here. You have none. I have it here. All you have is bad manners. That's all. I have it here. That's the bad Quran. manners. That's the Quran. So all they can do is quote a book from the seventh century called the Quran. I can quote from the Bible. By contrast, I can quote from the Bible. The church fathers argued against the writings of the Ebionites. They argued against the writings of the Gnostics. So the church fathers were arguing against other people's religions. But they never argued against something called an Injil. Why? Because it does not exist. It is a myth of the Quran. And there is no evidence of its existence. Yes, there is. I can the prove only it. thing Muslims can do can is take the New Testament, the New Testament that they say is corrupt yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah, then yeah, yeah, use yeah. it to prove their beliefs. Yeah. <laughs> so what is it? Corrupt or believable? Yeah. How can you use it? By what standard? You haven't got a standard. You just pick and choose verses as they suit you to do so. By contrast, by contrast, notice the Muslim heckler. No Christian heckled Lamin, but the Muslims are heckling the Christian. That is their poor conduct. Everyone, because you're wrong. One verse. Looking for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Saviour, Christ Jesus. It's in black and white. Jesus is God. Jesus never said that. Jesus Saviour. This is we are here. This empty barrels makes the most sound. This man has his studies in the Bible. I can tell you now. They did six verses from the Bible where God speaks about it. He doesn't even know. He says, he said, Jesus the Savior and God. Now, let's go back to the Old Testament more. You don't even know what God says about himself. God says a lot of things about himself in the Bible, in the Old Testament, about his oneness and his uniqueness. Jesus the Savior, you have already your Bible. If you read the Bible, it is mentioned. It is mentioned in the book of Isaiah, book of Isaiah, chapter number 43, verse number 10 to 11. It's like, it's like he's omnipotent. Before me, no God was formed. Yes. No shall there be any after me. I, I am the Lord. And besides me, there is no Savior. There is no Jesus there. God said, besides him, there is no Savior. You read the Bible again. It is mentioned in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 46, verse number 9. Remember the, remember the former things of old. For I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me. Let me put the whole on art. Surah Ikhlas, chapter 4, 112, verse number 4. Let me call the whole art, and there is nothing unto like him. The book of Isaiah, chapter number 46, verse number 9, God said, There is no no like me. You have to read your Old Testament. Furthermore, in the Bible, in the book of Exodus, chapter number 9, verse number 14, God is talking there. That you may know that there is no like me in all the earth. Do you want to shout that way? Not, in my face. not like me. I want you to get the message. There is no well, like me in all the earth. You are bound down to Jesus. What did Jesus? What did God say about Himself in the Book of Exodus? In the Book of Exodus, chapter number twenty, verse number three to five. God said, 
You shall have no other gods besides me. You shall have no other gods besides me. You shall not make for yourself a graven unit or any lights of anything that is in heaven above or that is, in, that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. You shall not bow down to them. He's panicking. He shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. You say Jesus the Savior. You bow down. I was saying Jesus. You are following Paul in the book of Philippians. Paul, you are following in the book of Philippians. In the book of Philippians, chapter two, verse number ten, Paul said, "In the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and on the earth." Who said it? God said that. God said you should not bow down to them. Jesus never said bow down to me. In the in, in, in the book of in, in the gospel of uh, Luke. Chapter number six, verse number twelve. He said that Jesus went out into the mountain and prayed and continued all night in prayer to who? To Almighty God. Jesus had a God. He had a God. He was a God. How can he be God? He said he's God. Man, talking to you. No, I'm not talking to you, Brady. You see, it's disturbing. You see, it's disturbing now. Talk to him. You read the Bible. It is mentioned in the, in, in the Gospel of John. There, Gospel of John 27, 17. Jesus said to Mary Magdalene, Touch me not, for I am not ascended to the Father, but go to my brethren and say to I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. If Jesus had a God, how can he be God? Exactly. Furthermore, in the Bible, exactly. yes. in the yes. Gospel of Matthew, God, Gospel of Matthew, chapter number, Gospel of Matthew, 27 46. Matthew 27 46. According to them, when Jesus was being crucified, According to the cross, Jesus, Ella, Ella, Lama, Sabatani, oh my God, oh my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Who was that God? Yes. Oh my God, oh my, he, he was even blaming God. He, he did not know he was going to die. Exactly. You're telling me that Jesus knew he was going to die. Now he went willingly to die, but he was he freaked out. One minute, one minute. My God, my God, why hast thou, who was that God? And why was he blaming God? Exactly. That means that he didn't know he was going to die. We are telling you, you are following Paul, not Jesus. Jesus was a man, a prophet, a servant of God. Exactly. You know what God said? Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 18. Behold my servant. God is calling Jesus, behold my servant, whom I have chosen, in whom my soul is well pleased. If Almighty God is calling Jesus his servant, how can a servant be God? Exactly. Read your Bible. Exactly. Take there we go. all you go. Don't run away today. So, very good, so, very good. So, Jesus is not the Savior. Yeah, you said yeah, it. Sorry. Yeah, go to Old Testament. So I'm saying now, so this Bible here, he believed in it. The Bible you got there. Look, you want to know? They said 40 people wrote the Bible. 66 books. 40 people wrote the Bible. We want to know who are these 40 people? The Quran. One author saw us. Who are these 40 people? Are they jeans? Are they human beings? One no, no, no. of them. 40 people. Okay. okay. Ladies and gentlemen, you can tell that the Dawa team's worried because they're having to clap their champion. So, Lamin quoted the Gospel of John, bearing in mind that Lamin is trying to argue that the New Testament doesn't show that Jesus is God. And I gave a verse where Jesus is called clearly God. Now, if Jesus is God, then he is the only saviour. So quoting passages in the Old Testament showing that God is the only saviour, if Jesus is God, forms no contradiction. Because if Jesus is God, then he is the only saviour. Lamin quotes verses out of context, like he did with the Gospel of John. Let us look at the first Gospel, the first chapter, in a bit more detail. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. No, 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 test, a God, a God, not the God, a God. Pause my time. Let me finish him up. Let me destroy him. Please, give him one hour. Give him one hour. No, I beg you, one hour, no, one hour. Notice, Lamin's having to control his Muslim brother because Islam has failed him. Islam has failed him. 
don't go to him. Right. He's trying right. to rile him. Come in. You ready? He's no, not. You ready? We're gone. One so oh, finish with right. you. Right. Not Bob the, the word Bob logos the Bob the liar. in the Greek. The word is logos. And the corresponding word in that phrase was with God. The word God there in the Greek was theos. Now, if you know how the Greek grammar works, Which you don't. the ending of the word OS signifies who is the subject of the phrase. So logos es kai theos means that both the logos and the theos are the subject of one another. A -god. In other words, Hadouken Paul. A -god. A -god. In other words, God was the word and the word was God. They are interchangeable. There is no a God. And to prove that point, because now I'm debating two Muslims, not one. If you look, if you look, ladies and gentlemen, in the interlinear translation of the Jehovah's Witnesses, as I have, who believe that Jesus was a second God, and who translate this verse as Paul would like to translate it, in their interlinear, directly under the Greek, they translate it correctly as I have just given it. it, can be it and A then, it can be in their A New A World A International, A they insert the A, though they recognize in the Greek this is an emendation of the scholars. It is not justified by the Greek text. It is the correct Hadouken meaning. again, it's the correct, correct meaning. Hadouken. It's the correct meaning. It's so, correct meaning. let us look at the identity of this word. Because it says in the scripture that the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. In other words, he became a man. And when he became a man, he worshipped the Father as God and was his servant, thus yes, addressing all of Lamin's quotes. He, he worshipped him as but God. But it says, listen carefully, listen, listen carefully. The word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. And who is this word that was God that became flesh? Jesus Christ. It says, the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us, and we saw his glory, glory of the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified about him and cried out saying, this was he whom I have said, he who comes after me has a higher rank than I, for he existed before me, before me. So Christ existed before John, even though in the Gospels, John was born six months before Jesus. He doesn't know his Bible. And it identifies clearly this pre-existent word, who was God, with the God who was the Father, as Jesus Christ. Lamming doesn't know his Bible. He is misquoting text to suit his argument. There go, there go, I said, I'm so happy that I am now debating with this guy, this man here, fake preacher. He said, he said he quoted that Jesus is God. Jesus claimed that he's God. He can't show me. He's nowhere in the Bible. Nowhere Jesus said he's God. Bible. 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 So that's what they see. You see how insipid, you see how insipid this man is? He has been studying his Bible. Amazing. We go to the Bible again. I want to ask the Christians here, who is the creator of the heavens and the earth? Invariably, all these preachers say, Jesus Christ. They call Jesus. But you know what God said? You read the Bible in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 44, verse number 24. God himself is talking, he said, I am the Lord who made all things, who alone set out the heavens, who spread the earth by myself. No Trinity. <laughs> no Jesus, not the Holy Ghost. Read your Bible, go to the Old Testament, read it, so come back. God said, you understand? Yahweh. Now he said, God Jesus was God. Yahweh is Jesus God, God was a God. The Remember John 1.1 1, 1 and John 4. John 1.1 1 said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was Yahweh. God. 
John 1 14, and the world became flesh and dwelt among us. He quoted. According to him, them, that is Jesus, God incarnate. And he said, Jesus, God was, a, it was in the beginning, Jesus was God, and that God was a God. You know, God said, He hasn't read the Bible. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 32, verse number 39, God said, See now that I, see now that I, even I am He, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive, I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Read your Bible. In the beginning, that word, according to me, Jesus. In the beginning was the word, that word, Jesus, that word was God. And that God was with God. But God said here, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 32, verse number 39. See that, see now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive, I wound and I heal. Neither is there any record of my hand. Now, Jesus can never be God. Because Peter himself, Peter, the leader of the disciples, the head of the disciples, after Jesus left this world, according to them, in the Bible, Jesus went to speak to, to, to the crowd. He went with the disciples. It is mentioned in the book of Acts, chapter number 2. Verse number 22 to 23, he said, Jesus said, this is Peter. Jesus already left this world. Peter went and said, O men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God. In this verse, Peter makes a distinction between Jesus and God. O men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God. With mighty works and wonders and signs, which God did through him. And you are witness to it. So all these miracles Jesus performed with the Muslims believed in them. Yes. God was doing his work. And Peter confirmed it. So why can't you read the Bible with understanding? Jesus never said he's God. He never said, What's it mean? Now, who, as I said, Jesus himself said in Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 11, verse number 25. Jesus said, Confirm this verse, Almighty God is the Lord of the heaven and earth. The Lord and heaven is the earth. Jesus said, Almighty God is the Lord of the heavens and the earth. Read it. And you he say he's the Lord of heaven and the earth. I mean, you are deluded. The Bible is the verses. Jesus making distinction between Almighty God. You read the Bible, it is mentioned again. In the Gospel of John, chapter 4, verse number 23. Here is, Jesus said, But now he's coming. One minute. But the hour is coming, and now is when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks sought to worship him. The true worshippers will worship Almighty God. The false worshippers like you will worship a human being, a creature, who never claimed divinity, who never saved God, who never worship me. Not a single verse. You said, you, you said, you said that Jesus said he's God. Charles, it's in video. It's in there. He said, yeah. You saw that Jesus said he's God. Show us. Nowhere in the Bible. Why Jesus said he's God or worship me. Nowhere. Show us. Is it finished? No, no, you got 20 seconds. 20 seconds. That's the thing. I'll give it to you. Okay. No, give it go. To you want the evidence? Bible, you got the Bible. Show us the evidence. You can't. You feel miserable. Okay. Came here about Islam. Finish. But look at empty barrels make the most sound. Okay. You, you have obeyed your Bible. Elohim. Elohim. Go. Yahweh. Go. It's all right, yeah. bro. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Yahweh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't mention Yahweh. Yahweh, yeah, there's no Yahweh here. Yahweh, Yahweh. Jesus never called call Yahweh. What is Allah, 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 Allah. That's no Yahweh. Right. Yahweh. Elohim. So, let us quickly address this point. Because Lamin says, where does Jesus say, I am God? Yes. Worship me. That's so, I will give it, shut up Lamin. I will give it to him. And I will use the names that he will recognize. And why will he recognize them? Because in his Quran, Allah gives certain names to himself. So let's look at some of the titles that Jesus gave to himself that Allah then steals and uses for himself. So Jesus said, and these are Jesus' words, I am the light of the world. But the Quran says that Allah is the light of the world. So who's the light of the world, Muslims? Allah or Jesus? Allah. So when Jesus says, I am the light of the world, what is he calling himself? God. 
There you go. That didn't take very long, did it? That didn't take very long. But it gets worse for Lamin. It gets worse for Lamin. Because in the Quran, another one of the divine titles that Muhammad steals, that he plagiarizes from the Christian faith and attributes to his God, Allah, is the title, the first and the last. Those are two titles that every Muslim will recognize as belonging to Allah. But what does Jesus call himself? Reading from the book of Revelations, he says, Behold, I am coming quickly. My reward is with me to re-render to every man according to what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. So Jesus calls himself the first and the last in the Bible, and Allah calls himself the first and the last in the Quran. So who is the first and the last, Allah or Jesus? Muslims will say Allah. So Jesus is calling himself God. <laughs> Furthermore, it gets worse for Lamin. It gets worse for Lamin. This is funny. Do you all remember when he quoted John 17? And he quoted when our Lord spoke of his beloved Father and said, To know you, the true God something that we Christians believe with all our hearts. But what he didn't quote to you was the rest of the verse. So let's quote the rest of the verse and see what it says about Jesus. It says, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you. Note the Trinitarian language, Father and Son even as you have given him authority over all flesh. So Jesus has authority over all flesh. Isn't that God's domain? Doesn't Allah have authority over all flesh? Yep, we believe that. That to all whom you have given him, he may give eternal life. Who will give eternal life? Jesus Christ will give eternal life, not Allah. Jesus! That's what it says. It, was a joy. it goes on. He couldn't save himself. That they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work which you have given me to do. Now, Father, glorify me together with your with the glory which I had with you before the world was so before the world existed Jesus had the glory of the father pre-existently thus the Father is God, is Jesus really Christ is God, and all it remains is to show the Holy Spirit That's is God. Because so you can see, this man is fairly miserable. He cannot show me from the Bible why Jesus claimed divinity. Oh, he's got nowhere. Let's go to the Bible. Let's, 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 see let's see what Jesus said. Let me finish. Let's see what Jesus said to the young man. If you read the Bible, in the Gospel of Matthew, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 19, verse number 16 to 17, a young man came to Jesus and said, Good master, what good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? What good things shall I may do that I may go to heaven? And Jesus answered, verse number 17, Jesus said, Why do you call me good? There is none good but one which is God. Jesus hated. He abhorred for someone to call him good. Why do you call me good? There is no good but one, which is God. If you would enter life, obey the commandments. Here, listen to me. Why did Jesus say, if you want to go to heaven, believe that I am God, or believe that I died on the cross for your sins? But he emphatically said to the man, if you would enter life, obey the commandments. Simple. Yes. There is nowhere in the Bible Jesus said that, look, because of the sin of Adam and Eve, sin entered into the world. And because of that, God sent me to die on the cross for your sins. You are following the teachings of Paul and the church fathers. 
No Jesus Christ is on him. You got the Old Testament. What did God say? He will never go through the Old Testament. He knows it. God, in the Bible, the Old Testament, in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 45, verse number 21 to 22. 21 says, God said, and there is no other God besides me, a righteous God, and a Savior that is not beside me. Verse number 22 said, turn to me and be saved. Turn to me and be saved. All the end of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. He did not say turn to Trinity. He did not say turn to Jesus. Turn to me. God is talking about himself in the Bible. And he said, God is not author of confusion in the first Corinthians 14:33. God is not an author of confusion. God in the Old Testament speaks by his oneness, his uniqueness. We, we, we the Muslim believe in. God cannot come later and say, Oh, I'm a human being. It doesn't make sense. That's why the Bible, you can't believe that Bible is the first word of God, as I said. Look at them. I don't know which one you believe in. <laughs> call that, let me call that. There is something here that's not here. Stay. Jesus never claimed divinity. So many verses the Bible, Jesus makes a distinction between an Almighty God. You understand? You read the Bible again. The Bible says Jesus is a prophet. Several verses in the Bible. The Messiah. If you read the Bible in the Gospel of John, chapter 4, uh, Jesus, in this verse, was having a, 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 a conversation with, with a lady and he said, we know that Messiah is coming. We know that Messiah is coming. When he comes, he will guide us. He will show us all things. To the fact, the lady said, I know that Messiah is coming. Messiah translated Christ. When he comes, he will show us all things. And the next verse, Jesus said, I who speak to you am he, the Messiah. No God incarnate. Nowhere in the Bible, show me. You can't. You are, you are going about the Quran or uh, the, 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 the name, the 99 names of Allah SWT, and and the first, and the light of the noon. You are There's being no nonsensical. You, you cannot prove any. You see, all right, bro, he's embarrassing see, see, himself. Let me use his bullets. God, you see, another Christian here, yeah? Bro, okay, bro, there you go. It's all right. Leave There's a Christian hatred. That's it. Bro, he's blaming Muslim. Bro, he's blaming Muslim. Bro, he's Muslim. Bro, we'll show him. Don't worry. You see what I'm saying? This man comes here, attack Islam. Unbeknown to all of you, the man is empty. He has installed the Bible. I challenge him. Six verses from the Old Testament where God speaks about his oneness. He can't quote it. He can't rely on the Bible and open it on a Google app. Last week, he lied. You caught him lying. Jesus Christ was a man, a prophet, a servant of God. You read the Bible again. In the book of Acts, chapter number 3, verse number 13, it says that. He said, the God of Abraham. Listen to me. The God of Abraham and of Isaac or of Jacob. No, 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 no. The God of Abraham and of Book of Acts, chapter 3, verse number 13. And the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus. If Jesus is called a servant of God, how can he be God? Yes. You are deluding yourself. And in the Bible, you know what it said? Jesus was, was for a while he was lower than the angels do you know that Jesus was lower than the angels Jesus was lower he was made lower than the angels in the book of Hebrews there read it 2 9 and we see that Jesus for a while was made lower than the angels and he said is God God be lower than the angels God created angels Bob you are, you are fake you see, you're being exposed. Bible, you cannot yeah. show me a verse Ten from the Bible. Seconds. Why Jesus is God? You're going to the, to, to the 99 level of water. Look at him. Look at his face. <laughs> I told people. <laughs> he can't. Look at my face. He right. hasn't studied his Bible. Look at time. him. Is it time? Proof. Time. The Bible time. says proof all things. Go on. Go on. Go on. Are they shouting at giving you a message. <laughs> Keeps chucking your Quran on the floor. Go, 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 go. <laughs> it's Allah's will, everything happens by Allah's will. Go, go, go. Let me see you. Go, go, go. Let me, let me. Right. Let me. Let me be quiet. Stop interrupting. So, guys, this is the sad thing about Lamin. Is he comes here and basically he has a script that he has to try and get through. He has a series of arguments that he has to put out there like a sausage factory machine <laughs> without ever engaging with what people say to him. So let's just recount some of the points that I made to Lamin that he never engaged with. Point one, the Quran talks about an Injil. I asked Lamin to show me any evidence at all that such a document existed. And by contrast, I referenced the Church Fathers. He never dealt with it. 
I quoted the Gospel of John, where it clearly says that the Logos is God, and says that the Logos becomes flesh, thus becoming a servant of the Father, and identifies that Logos as Jesus Christ. He didn't deal with it. Now, let's just deal with a couple of points that he makes, because all through this debate, I've been trying to pick up a point to deal with, whilst ignoring most of the noise that he goes on about. <laughs> so, remember when he quoted the Gospel of Mark, where someone went up to Jesus and said, Good teacher, and then Christ said, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God. And then yeah. Lamin said, Jesus abhorred people calling himself good. He wouldn't call himself good. Well, I refer Lamin to the Gospel of John again. And I refer him to verse 11. These are Jesus' words. I am the good shepherd. Thank you. Hadouken. Now, why is that reference important? He says, I don't go to the Old Testament. He says, I would be afraid to go to the Old Testament. So let's go to the Ezekiel, the book of Ezekiel. And let's look at what Ezekiel says. Yeah. Let me find it. In the book of Ezekiel, it says, this is the imagery that the Jewish people had of their God. Listen. For thus says the Lord God, behold, I myself will search for my sheep and seek them out as a shepherd cares for his herd. So the imagery of God in the Old Testament of their God is that he is a good shepherd and Jesus said I am the good shepherd not a good shepherd not one amongst many I am the good shepherd and how did the Jews respond to this they accused the Christ of blasphemy and said you being a man make yourself God they understood the term it's a shame Lamin doesn't <laughs> And the reason why Lamin doesn't is because all he has is a series of arguments he read in a Dawa pamphlet and so Zaki and Nike do and he's repeating them here. No, he quoted Isaiah. He quoted Isaiah and he said, oh, Bob would never dare go to Isaiah. So let's go to Isaiah. Listen carefully, Lamin. Are you listening? Yeah. Listen carefully. And as you hear this description of Muslims, ask yourself at every point of the description who is being talked about. Listen to me, O Jacob, even Israel, whom I called. I am he. I am the first. I am also the last. Surely my hand founded the earth and my right hand spread out the heavens. When I call to them, they stand together. Assemble all of you and listen. Who among them has declared these things? The Lord loves him. He will carry out his good pleasure on Babylon and his arm will be against the Chaldeans. I, even I, have spoken. Indeed, I have called him. I have brought him and he will make his way successful. Come near to me. Listen to this. From the first, I have not spoken in secret. From the time it took place, I was there. Who's speaking? Muslims. It's God, right? He founded the earth, right? He stretched out the heavens. Remember, Lamin quoted that. But listen to the next bit Lamin didn't quote. <laughs> and now the Lord God has sent me with his spirit. Trinity in the Old Testament. Yeah. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> they finished, they finished. Go on. This guy, this guy is deceptive. This man is very deceptive, you can see. According to all verses about Jesus making distinction between him and Almighty God. And then God speaks a lot about his uniqueness, but he's avoiding them. I don't know. This is the, this is the deception of this person. Now, what I want to ask How long has it been now? At least an hour. Lorami, let's wrap up soon. What I want to ask God now is, what is the first of all the commandments in the Bible?
Sorry, you can't. You can't. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you interrupting him? No, he's talking to you me. You're interrupting him. He's not heard what he said. Yes, he's talking yeah, to he's me. Asking. Why are you saying that? Why are you saying that? Do not do that to him. Why are you saying that? No, no. Do you see there deception? Do not. Oh, here we go. He's running. Do not let him end the game. Let him start again. Look at him. Let him start again. Why are you interrupting? You see the deception? Let me finish. So, this Bob here cannot show me. Not a single verse where Jesus claimed divinity. I'm telling you. Yeah. See, I quoted yeah. what, what, uh, 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 what uh, uh, Peter, Peter, the right hand disciple of Jesus Christ said in the book of Acts 2, 20 to 23. All men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man, Boring. attested to you by God. <laughs> With mighty works, wonders and signs, we go deep through him and we just wait. The man is avoiding them. You read it, go in the Bible, the first of all the commandments, they are breaking that one. I don't know whether you know about that. In the Gospel of Mark, chapter number 12, verse number 28 and 29, a scribe said to Jesus, which is the first of all the commandments? And what was Jesus' answer? Verse, 20, verse number 29, Jesus said, the first of all the commandments is here or is like the Lord our God is one Lord not a triumph Lord the Lord our God is one Lord so why do you get this uh, 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 first epistle of John 5 7 for that for the nativity that they are heaven the Father the Word and the Holy Ghost and these three are one so according to them the Father is a God the Son is a God the Holy Ghost is a God but they are not three God one God the Father is all powerful the Son is all powerful, the Holy Ghost is all powerful, but they are not all powerful. They are all powerful. The Father is all knowing, the Son is all knowing, and the Holy Ghost is all knowing. But the Father in the Bible, Jesus was not all powerful and all knowing. If Jesus was not all powerful and all knowing, how can he be God? Because son of Mark, chapter number uh, 13, verse number 32, Jesus said, and, the, and of that hour, and of that day or that hour, no one knows. Not even the angels in heaven know the Son, but only the Father. If Jesus doesn't know the hour, how can he be God? You cannot tell my, you cannot tell my Jesus when he was in uh, God incarnate. That's nonsensical. When Jesus makes a distinction between him and Almighty God, I told him here, according to Bible, according to Bible, when Jesus was being crucified, Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 46. Can you shut up? No, 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 no. Look at this soko. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah that is no, soko, you see? Yeah. This, look at him. Disgusting man. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. always when he's... the side down, yeah, JC. Yeah. Show up. <laughs> Show up, <laughs> JC. Oh, Bob did 30 seconds. Bob did it. I'll give you twice. You can have 30 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. So, you see that deception? See, see what you did? So, that's what I'm saying. So, let's go to the Bible now. Let's go to the Bible. In the Gospel of John, Chapter number 14, verse number 9. They said, Jesus said, He that has seen me has seen the Father. When Jesus is God. Now let's see what Jesus said, verse number, verse number 1. Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse number 1. Jesus was talking to the disciples. He said, Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In this verse, Jesus makes a distinction between my Almighty God. Believe in God, believe also in me. We are telling you, Jesus Christ of him was a man, a prophet, a messiah. Sing to the children of Israel. I believe you are Christian, but Jesus was not a Christian. Jesus was not a Trinitarian. Nowhere in the Bible. Jesus is a Trinitarian. No. Was a Trinitarian. Jesus said, Gospel of John 5 30, I can of myself do nothing. He said, Jesus is God. And he said, I can of myself do nothing. As I hear a judge, and my judgment is just because I seek not of my own will. But the will of him who sent me, a Muslim. Simple. All the prophets, all the prophets are Muslims. <laughs> all the prophets, all the prophets. Yeah. What is a Muslim? When I say, what is a, see, listen to me. When I say all the prophets are Muslim, they laugh. When I say what is a Muslim, you don't even know. Muslim is someone simply who was his only one God and do not associate any, any partners with him. The father of religion, Abraham, was the Almighty God. He never said anything about Trinity. Everyone was a Trinitarian. So, okay. So, notice again, and notice that all the way through this debate, Lamin has not engaged with any argument that was marshalled. Nothing, because Lamin is just a sausage factory machine. But he just pumps out Zakianite points. He just reads. Dawah pamphlets and repeats them. 
He has no capacity for critical thinking. None. So let's go through some of the verses. Let's go through some of the verses. So once again, we'll show verses where Jesus says that he is God, worship me. Listen, John 5, 17. Sorry, John 5, 22. For not even the Father judges anyone, but he has given all judgment to the Son. No, Notice the Trinitarian language. So who's going to judge? Jesus God. Christ. Now, so that all will honour the Son even as they honour the Father. The word honour there is the kind of honour that you give to God. You honour the Father as God. And Jesus is saying, honour the Son as you honour the Father. So if you honour the Father as God, logically, how do you honour the Son? God. So, furthermore, he said, Jesus never called himself God. I will show you yet more titles of Jesus that Muhammad stole and put in the Quran. Because in the Quran, it says that Allah is the resurrection. That's what it says. But, and it's al Bayeth. My Arabic may be a bit off in pronunciation. But Jesus says in John 11, it says, Jesus says, I am the resurrection. So who's the resurrection, Muslims? Is Allah the resurrection? Is Allah al Bayeth? Or is Jesus al Bayeth? Is Jesus the resurrection? Yes, he did. Furthermore, it says in the Quran, that Allah is the truth, al haq But Jesus says, I am the way and the truth. So I ask you Muslims, who is the truth? Who is al haq Is it Allah? Thank you. Or is it Jesus? Because Jesus says, I am al haq That's what Jesus said. So I've shown you where Jesus says, I am God. And I've shown you where he says, Worship me as God. Lamin, your argument has been refuted. You need to deal with it. You need to deal with it. No. Lamin has still not addressed this simple point. And as we round up in this final roundup, I would appreciate if Lamin would engage in at least one point I've raised, like I have addressed many of the points that he has raised. And here's the thing. We started this debate, we started this debate talking about the Bible. And as quickly as he could, Lamin got off the topic and started talking about the divinity of Christ. Why? I'll tell you why. Because there is plenty of evidence available, manuscript evidence, the writings of the Church Fathers that demonstrate the stability of the text, the reliability of the text. Lamin is talking about a few textual variants that Christians freely accept to there that have no bearing upon our doctrinal belief. And that isn't my opinion, that is the opinion of Dr. Bart Ehrman, a critic of the Christian faith and the leading textual scholar today who was also in agreement with his teacher, Dr. Bruce Metzger, who was also a textual critic and died a Christian. Why? Because the textual variants do not affect the doctrines of the Christian faith. The doctrines of the Christian faith came first and the, the, the text emerged from them. Now, I'll finish by asking Lamin one question. He's avoided it five times so far. Let's see if he'll deal with it at last. The question is this, Lamin. Are you listening? Are you listening, Lamin? This is important. Where is any shred of evidence at all from the first century to the seventh century that there was a book called the Injil. Where is your evidence? You see, this man here, as I said, is a charlatan. A fake. Uh, uh, all he comes here, he's gonna, he cannot show me anything. He's only coming Let him embarrass himself. You're backing please. like a dog here. Go heckling. Every Let him Sunday, back like a dog, attacking Islam here. 
casting aspersion on a soul, but he had called him today. Nowhere in the Bible to show me Jesus is God. He said Jesus said he's God. What's he mean? He can't show me. You failed miserable. No, 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 no. He failed no, no, no. fail miserable. He failed miserable. Look, I've got a lot of verses here. A lot of verses. You don't call Why Jesus begs you. Yeah. 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 You know, you don't call the Riley, you call the monster. Yakub. Let him embarrass himself. It's my turn that they're clean. Guys, you see? Let him embarrass himself. Let him hang himself. Let him, himself. Let him, himself. Let him hang himself. This is, this is I've asked the question, the camera's caught it. Let him not answer. I'll come to the question. I'm coming to the question. Don't worry. Everybody here, here. So you can see. He failed miserably. Every week come in here, attack Islam. Not a single verse. All the verses are quoted. You call it. Did you, did you, did you answer them? I quoted a lot of verses here. You don't even know the verses. You don't even know the Gospel of Mark, chapter number 27, 46. Do you know it? Very important. You don't know. You don't even know. <laughs> I quoted, you don't even know. You are opening the Bible. They can't even call properly. Nowhere. Jesus. There's not a single verse. Why he said, bro, what's it mean? He said, Jesus says, God, what's it mean? He can't show me. You're quoting other verses. This is amazing. This is actually amazing. Look, you got this, but um, yeah, you see, I believe it. These two here. First appeal of John, chapter 5, verse number 7. Is here. They took it out. Non Muslims. You agree with me in the videos on YouTube that is corrupted. Did you? Yes. So, which, which verse of the Bible do you believe in? For the three that men from heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. In here, they say it's a lie. Can I read it here? Let me get my glasses so that you know. I don't think I'm going to get an answer no. to my question, no, guys. No, no, no. I don't no, think no, I'm going to get an answer. answer. Wait, we have to go by the Bible. The Bible first. Wait. He's running away. Wait, wait. You're running away. 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 I've addressed your You're point, Flamin. Away. You haven't answered any question. It's on YouTube. He did not. He did not. He did not. He did not answer it. You will be vertical. Here. These part, 32 scholars of high eminence, you know what they said about this? We owe it to an incalculable debt. Yet the King James Verson has grave defects. It's true. We've got it here. It's true, it does. I agree. Grave Our defects. Doesn't compromise and my faith. Are you following the Bible that's got grave defects? It doesn't worry me at all. It doesn't worry you. The King James Translation. The Bible that's got grave defects, are you following it? The Take King it James Translation. He's got, he's got the defects in do not worry me at all. Because I can't believe it. the point that you're not engaging I with can't believe it. is that our doctrines the Bible, came before the, the books. Are you listening? What? Let, let, listen. Oh, no, listen, 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 listen to him. It's my turn. Yeah, but listen to him because you've got no idea what you're uh, saying. Uh, this guy, I suppose. No, 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 this is my turn. It's my turn. Then it's me. Does anybody want you to hear Lamin answer my question? Then it's me. That is one minute. Oh, All right, oh, guys, oh, 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 I'm going to let Lamin finish no, 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 and then I'm going to walk away from Lamin and talk. I'm running away. Not running. No, I'm just tired away. of you avoiding you are my question. You're tired because I'm exposing well, no, you. Well, I'm debunking your lies. You agreed with me that King James Bass had made it. The sausage factory style of argument. Lamin has mastered it. You don't need my time. You don't need my time. Let me finish my time. Oh, yeah, do my time. Yeah, he's talking. No, no, he's been talking. And he asked me to help him. And now look at that. I apologize. I'm just getting frustrated that he's not answering my question. you. I, right. I, I admit, I had a moment of indiscipline. I have had a moment of indiscipline. I owe you an apology, Lamin. I'm sorry for interrupting you. Something you'll never hear a Muslim say. He didn't answer them. Let me finish. We had a debate. He didn't answer my lots of questions. Answer. Jesus has no God. I quoted the verses. He didn't. He didn't answer them. You understand? So what I'm saying now, you agree with me that last time that the King James Version got defects. That two scholars of high eminence they wrote it here. They said this has got defects, and he's concurred. He agreed with the Muslims has got defects, and you believe in it. But the word of God, a word of God, to do have right. contradictions. Just let him finish. The Quran, yeah. here. Have to just let him finish. Yeah. 114 surahs, 6,223 verses. No addition, no division, no contradictions. As far as Jesus is concerned, I'm going to quote a verse from the Quran in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 71. Verse number 175. God said here, Nisa 4, 171. All people know the scripture, all Jews and Christians, do not go to extremes in your religion and do not speak lies against Allah, but speak the truth. The Messiah, Isa, Jesus, the Son of Mary. The son of Mary was no more than a messenger of Allah and his word which he bestowed on Maryam and the spirit created by him. 
wala takunu salasa don't say it in the whole kind of thing this is even better for you for life for lord glory be to him far exalted is he above all the sun here the cotton john 316 is here they took it out that it was scholars no muslim scholars no jewish scholars not hindu scholars christian scholars of high eminence john 316 is out because it's not made First, the of sword, five, five, seven. For there are three that are in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. They're talking out. They cannot be one. Almighty God, only one. Allah of God is only one, not time God. You come here, we can attack Islam. Now you exposed. He exposed today. I'm glad you caught, you cannot call the verse of the Bible. Look at me in the eye. Over. Time. So guys, and look at it. did anyone hear an answer to my no. question? No. No. Not an answer to my question. Nothing. I asked him for a single scrap of evidence no, not one. No, that no, his no. injil existed and, and he gave zero, zero evidence. Yeah. And the reason why he gave zero evidence for the existence of an injil is because there is none. History is silent about the claims of the Quran. Now what does that mean? What does that signify? It means this. It means this Quran that is supposedly perfect without error or contradiction is in contradiction to everything we know about history. This isn't just a little blunder by Allah. This is a whopping big blunder by Allah. Allah, in his good will, foresaw that he would not provide any evidence at all about his book called the Injil. None! But the New Testament is testified to by 5,600 Greek manuscripts, by 10,000 Latin manuscripts, and by over 5,000 scripts of Syriac, Gothic, Slovakic, e Coptic, and, no and numerous other languages, Armenian, which means that we as Christians have an embarrassment of riches, an embarrassment of riches that we can look to, to de look at our scripts and our documents to see if they are trustworthy or not. And what do we find? For a fact, we find that there are textual variants. A fact. Thank you. We've never denied it. In fact, what he doesn't know is that Oregon, a church father, noted this very thing long before the Enlightenment. He doesn't know that. Why? Because all he's doing is repeating arguments he's heard from Zaki and Ike. <laughs> he's not studied anything at all. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> and what do the scholars conclude? The conclusion is that the text of the New Testament is stable. But over the course of 2,000 years, there are textual variants. But those scholars, like Dr. Bart Ehrman, agree that none of those textual variants affect the Christian faith at all. No doctrine of ours is affected by any textual variant. I've defended the Trinity in this park on numerous occasions. I've never used the comma Johannan. I've never used 1 John 5, 7. Why? because I know it's a textual variant. I use other passages in the Bible like I have today to prove the divinity of Christ. But I want to thank Lamin for pointing out an error in the Quran because he has argued that we Christians believe in three gods. And he has argued that based upon his Quran. His Quran is wrong. His Quran gets it wrong. His Quran is in error. So that's two errors. A historical error and a factual error in the Quran. So now I'm going to finish because I am tired of hearing Lamin 
repeat the same points without ever engaging in the counter argument. I've addressed these passages from the Old Testament. In conclusion, the distinctions that he talks about are the same distinctions that we use as evidence for the three persons of the Trinity. He proves nothing by quoting what we believe and quoting it in the way we believe it. He's just misrepresenting it. He's attacking a caricature. If you want to hear a summary and concluding remarks, I'm going to go over there. You're welcome to listen to Lamin, or you're welcome to come and listen to me. I'm trying to be a, um, an apologetic. Yeah, um, an yeah. apologist. Yeah, apologist. But yeah, bro, let me take your number or something, man. Like, I'm, I'm we'll be, just wait for us here and we'll make we'll some co concluding remarks. So, this is, this is the reason why I didn't want to debate Lamin in the first place. Because as you can see, all he's here to do is just to regurgitate a script. He just churns through his script and he ignores everything you say. He asked me to say, where does Jesus say he's God? Well, I showed him according to his own Quran. He asked me, where does Jesus say, worship me as a God? I showed him, honor me as you honor the Father. I sh he said that you would never go into the Old Testament. I quoted Isaiah. He said the Trinity was not in the end Old Testament. All the way through that passage, God is speaking, and he says, the Lord God has sent me with his spirit. Lamin just doesn't engage with anything. He's a man driven by an ego complex. And he's not a man of his word. He's on record as saying he'll pay me 500 pounds. He's never paid it me. He's on record as saying that he never said that, which means that he's on record as lying about what he said. <laughs> I mean, the guy just, uh, he's so, uh, that level of conceit, I don't like to engage with. <laughs> However, kudos to the Dawa team. They did ambush me today. They did ambush me and forced me to have a debate with Lamin. And you've seen what happens. So now you know, guys, why I don't like to debate Lamin. Not because he has anything intelligent to say, <laughs> but simply because he doesn't have anything intelligent to say and he doesn't want to engage what you, with what you say. The distinctions that he's talking about, that he kept going on about, we Christians use those distinctions. That's how we can't to construct the doctrine of the Trinity. Because Christ is making a distinction between him and the Father. And he's saying that I am God and he's saying the Father is God. So he's making a distinction between them as persons. And that is the term that the church uses philosophically to describe this distinction. So simply pointing out the fact that in the scriptures it teaches that there's one God and then teaches that Christ makes a distinction between him and the Father as God doesn't mean that Christ isn't also claiming to be God. When you take the whole of the New Testament together, you are forced to conclude that there is one God and that one God exists as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That is what you're forced to conclude if you use the whole of the New Testament. But the Muslim Dawah team only want to use selective verses and ignore other verses. And they do that because they are being dishonest. They are being dishonest about the Christian faith. And they try to use this argument on unsuspecting tourists who don't know any better in the park. Yes, Christ became a servant because he became a man. Every man to be a sinless man must worship his God. So if the Son of God, the divine Logos, enters into flesh and takes on the fullness of humanity, he must take on the full mantle of being human. Which means that whom should he worship? He can't worship himself. The Muslims are right on that. So he worships the Father as his God in his humanity. And that is why Christ is the sinless lamb that is able to die for our sins. Because he is the example par excellence of the faithful Israel that meets a faithful God and in so doing completes the Old Testament covenant and establishes the new.